Hey everyone, I'm out here in the garage today and I've got my car ramps here. And I thought about doing a simple video on using car ramps, but as I got more into the subject, I decided to do a lot more comprehensive video. So we'll be touching on several things today. The first thing we're going to talk about is using car ramps versus using jack stands and when I prefer to use one over the other. Uh, you may be able to get away with just using car ramps for your particular purposes. We'll also talk a little bit about the various styles of car ramps that are available out there. I'm not going to touch on every single style, but we'll talk about some of the more popular styles that are available. And then we'll get into some of the precautions that I like to take when I'm using car ramps. And maybe a thing or two you haven't thought of, so stay tuned for that part of the video. And the last thing we'll touch on, we'll do a review of these car ramps and a quick demo. So we've got a lot to cover today, so stay tuned. So for the average DIYer, there are going to be a couple different options. The most cost effective options when it comes to getting your car in the air to do any sort of uh, maintenance or repair work on it. So we've got the jack and jack stands and then we've got some car ramps. So let's talk through some scenarios of when you would use one over the other. And this decision really isn't that difficult, but I just thought I'd throw this out there just to make sure we cover our bases here. So let's start first of all with fluid changes. So if you're doing an oil change or a transmission fluid change or some sort of a differential fluid change or maybe you're doing a coolant uh, change, then you can get away a lot of times with using just car ramps. If you're doing some sort of a front end inspection on your car, maybe you just want to take a look and make sure it's not leaking anywhere, a lot of times you can just use car ramps for that. And then for any other mechanical work where you have to remove the front wheels or where you need to get really far under the car then a jack and jack stand is going to be your best bet in that case. So one of the most important factors when you're looking at which ramps to buy is the angle of approach of your particular vehicle. So what I mean by angle of approach is the angle at which when you're driving up the ramp, the front of your car is going to barely scrape on the ramp. So on the race ramps website, there's this really cool yardstick test you can do. So we're going to step right through this. The first step is to place a 36 inch yardstick or tape measure at the base of your front wheel. And then what you're going to do is raise that yardstick up until it touches the front of your car. And then once it hits the front of your car, what you're going to do is take a measurement from the ground to the end of that yardstick and record that measurement. So I'm going to plug in 10 inches in this calculator here. And then I'm going to click on calculate. And it says your maximum angle of approach is 16.1 degrees. And what race ramps does in addition to that is show you all the ramps that meet that angle of approach or are less. So for example, these are all the ramps here that meet the 16.1 degree criteria or have an angle of approach that's less than 16.1 degrees. Now you're going to want to keep in mind some of the other factors, of course and that includes the maximum tire width. And of course the most important factor is going to be the amount of weight the ramps can support. Alright, so let's take a look at some of the styles of ramps that are available out there. I'm going to touch on just three here. So we'll start first of all with these solid steel ramps. These happen to be a Harbor Freight brand. And I'll go ahead and click on this picture here so you can see a little bit better view of it. And let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at some of the features and specifications of this product. So we've got a 6,500 pound gross vehicle weight, 2,000 pounds for, per ramp, durable powder coat finish. It's got these raised safety ribs on the sides and punch and extruded traction holes on the incline. And these are about 35 inches long, maximum lift height of 8 inches. And these are going to be a little bit heavier than the other ramps we're going to look at. You can see right here, product weight 31 pounds. And they support up to a 9 inch wide tire. So that's the steel ramps. Let's go ahead and move on next to our plastic ramps. So these are the Rhino ramps, the 11909 to 12,000 pound version. And these are the ramps that I have that I'm actually going to review later on. So we're not going to talk a whole lot about that here. 
And they also have a 16,000 pound version, the 11912. And we'll move on to the last one, which is going to be our rally ramps by race ramps. And the one that I'm looking at here is a 30 inch rally ramps with the 5 inch lift. And they're good up to about 8 inch wide tires. So I've got a really cool design there. Let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at some of the features. We've got an angle of approach of 16 degrees, also known as angle of incline. They have an anti-slip and skid material. Weight capacity is 1,500 pounds per ramp. They're also made out of an exclusive high-density foam. So these are 100% solid ramp. And then they are lightweight too. They only weigh about four pounds per ramp. So that's the race ramps. And what I would do if you're interested in one of these ramps, I would come over here and click on this where it says need help. Use our ramp calculators just to make sure you get the right ramps for your vehicle. Let's talk about precautions when using ramps. And number one on my list is gonna to be to check the condition of the ramps and in the case of the plastic ramps, what we're looking for is cracks or any evidence of collapsing. And I do this check before every single use. Second on my list is making sure that I'm using the ramps on a stable, flat, and level surface. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You don't want to have any sort of issues happen to your property or to your car because you're not using the ramps accordingly. Now, if we're talking about a flat gravel driveway or an aggregate driveway, I consider placing a sheet of three quarters inch plywood under the ramps to smooth out that surface. Next, and one that isn't mentioned often and with which I've had personal experience, is using the ramps on a dry surface. And that includes also making sure your tires are dry. So if you're pulling your car into the garage on a rainy day, I would make sure the floor is dry and wipe off the front tires before driving onto the ramps. Lastly, and one that I'll demonstrate later, is to place wheel chocks behind the rear wheels as a secondary means of support. All right, so while we're reviewing this ramp here, we're going to compare it to my old ramp. And the reason why I mention that is they're made by the same company. So uh, let's start, first of all, looking at the new ramp. This is the Rhino Ramps 11909. This is the 12,000 pound gross vehicle weight version. So what that means is that each one of these ramps can support 3,000 pounds. If you look at them side by side, you'll see that they're pretty much the same length at roughly around 35 and a half inches. They're also the same height from the ground up to about here, and that's about six and three quarters. And from the ground up to this stop here is around eight and a half inches. The angle of incline, that's the angle you'll drive your car up onto the ramps, is about 17 degrees on both ramps. So that's kind of where the similarities end with these two ramps. We'll take a little bit closer look at this one. First of all, you'll see it's got a lot of relief cuts in it. So that helps the ramp to flex a little bit so it doesn't crack as quite as easily as this one. If you look at the tread design of these two ramps, this one's got more of a horizontal tread design. This one's got kind of a diamond plate pattern. And just kind of running my hand over it, I guess, is a simple test. This one seems like it's less slick than this one here. Now if you look at the width, that was the one thing I noticed with this new ramp. It looks a little more narrow than my old ramp. So I've got my tape measure here and what I'm going to do is measure the width here. We've got roughly uh, about nine and a quarter inches on that one and then this one is uh, it looks like it's bordering on ten, somewhere around nine and and uh, three quarters, somewhere in that area. So that was a little bit odd to me that they would make the new one a little more narrow than the old one. Right here in the front, you can see they have feet on them, and that's to keep the ramp from sliding. This one has a much bigger foot on it, whereas you can see this one's pretty small. So we're going to do a little bit of a test later on of this foot, too. I'm really curious about how this foot really performs and how it'll keep the ramp stationary. We've got this dot on the front on both ramps. That's for centering your tire on the ramps. So this ramp here has cutouts on the side. You got one there. You've got one over there. And then two more in the back there. Whereas this one, the old ramp, 
just has the one cut out in the back. In terms of weight, after just picking both these ramps up, this one weighs about 9.6 pounds, which it doesn't even feel like 9.6 pounds, so it's pretty light. And this one is a little bit heavier. I'm not sure exactly the weight on this one, but it's definitely heavier than the, the new ramp. This is the warning label on the side of the ramps, and I would definitely recommend that you take some time out and read through this warning label. There's a lot of good information here, and you want to make sure you're using the ramps appropriately, especially when you're talking about working with a vehicle that weighs anywhere from 3,000 pounds up. So definitely make sure you take some time out and read through this so that you use the ramps correctly. All right, so what I'm going to do here is a little bit of a grip test on these feet. So the foot on the front here and the foot on the front here. And what I'm going to do basically is just put my foot up here about 8 inches up the ramp and push out as hard as I can. See how far it goes. I'll start with the one on the right hand side first. Okay, that one barely moves. I'll move to the new one now. Do the same thing. All right, so really not much grip with this one on the left hand side. That's a little bit disappointing. All right, so there you have it the Rhino Raps 11909, the 12,000 pound version. And so far, after three years, there's no signs of any damage anywhere, no collapsing, no cracking. So that's definitely a good thing. Uh, the one thing I would say about these ramps is that if I had a heavy duty vehicle, I personally would go up to the 16,000 pound version, the 11912. But these should work in a lot of instances. That's just my own personal preference for a little extra security there. Stay tuned for the end of the video where I summarize my thoughts on these ramps and give them a DIY apprentice wrench rating. All right, so let's do a quick demo of these ramps using my 3,800 pound Acura RL as a guinea pig. So what I've done here first is position the car with the front wheels pointed straight ahead and with plenty of space in front of the car so I don't run into a wall or run into a cabinet. Next, I slide the ramps into place under the front tires and I like to wedge the ramps into place so that it lessens the chance that they'll move. I also centered the dot on the ramps on the tires. With the ramps in position, I hop in the car and start it. And then keeping my foot on the brake, I shift the car into drive and disengage the parking brake. I then carefully and gradually drive up the ramps. Once I reach the saddle at the top of the ramps, I gently brake. Then with my foot still on the brake, I apply the parking brake and shift the car into park. The last thing to do here is to place wheel chocks on either side of the rear wheels. Okay, so let's reverse the action here and get the car off the ramps. So the first thing I'm going to do here is remove the wheel chocks. Next, I hop back into the car and start it. Then keeping my foot on the brake, I shift the car into reverse and release the parking brake. Now, to back the car off the ramps, in most cases, the car's momentum will do the work for you. So I keep my foot on the brake and slowly allow the car to back itself down the ramps. Otherwise, it may be necessary to give the car just a little bit of gas to get it moving. On the DIY Apprentice wrench rating scale, I'm going to give these ramps a 4 out of 5. The 12,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating for plastic ramps is very impressive. It seems like they put some thought into making these ramps by adding relief cuts to allow the ramps to flex a little bit. And I also like the angle of incline which is perfect for most vehicles. The one negative that stood out obviously is a lack of grip by the foot on the front of the ramps. 
Overall, these are very reliable ramps and I've used them for the last three years without any issues. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.